Wherever you are, leaders are important. Whether it's to lead powerful organizations or just to make sure a group of friends are having a good time. Here are the seven traits that all great leaders possess. Number one, they radiate positive energy. There is nothing more important in a team than passion and the will to succeed. And having a positive leader is an important part of that. Sometimes I sign onto Facebook and I see these status updates that just reeks of negativity. These people are not good leaders. And more often than not, they are not very successful either. Great leaders radiate positive energy. Not only does that make them more likable, leading to more trust, it also boosts the team's morale. And countless studies have shown a positive relationship between team morale and productivity. Number two, they have a proactive attitude. When something goes wrong, it's easy to blame someone else or to find out why it happened immediately. But great leaders put that aside. They shift their focus entirely on solving the problem. I used to be in charge of the takeout service at the restaurant I worked at. So basically people would call to make their order and my job is to make sure everything is packed and given to the right person. It was a really busy restaurant so mistakes weren't that uncommon. This one time after a customer came to pick up his food, I realized that we forgot to pack part of his order. I was fairly new at the time and I didn't know what to do, but luckily one of the owners of the restaurant was there, so I explained to him what happened. He didn't blame me, he didn't even ask how it happened. Instead, he told me to call the customer, apologize for what happened, and then tell him that we will personally deliver the missing part of his order to his house. At the end of the day, the owner sat down with me to talk about how we can prevent something like this from happening again, but he did it at the end of the day not when the problem was still unresolved. Great leaders know what to focus on at any given point in time. They are proactive. Number three, they delegate tasks completely. Great leaders realize that they can't do everything themselves, so they focus on the most difficult tasks and delegates the rest to others. Let's say you make more than $30 an hour. Yet, every week, you still spend several hours cleaning your house and doing the laundry. Considering a maid costs around $30 an hour, you might decide it's worthwhile to hire one to do your housework for you. When I first started delegating my work to others, I was hesitant because I knew that I could probably do a better job than the person I'm assigning it to. For example, a maid might put your clothes in the wrong drawer every once in a while, but you should still hire her because the extra time you get to work on more valuable tasks generally outweighs the negatives. Delegating also means fully trusting your team to do the task without micromanaging their every move. Great leaders delegate tasks to others and trust them to get the job done. Number four, they are approachable. A great leader is one who their teammates could see themselves approaching whenever they have a concern or when they simply need someone to discuss things to. When Sam Walton opened over a dozen Walmart stores, he was still available to privately talk to any one of his thousands of employees. Was this the reason Sam Walton was so successful? We can't say for sure, but he is a prime example of someone who's approachable. And it so happens he's also one of the most notable leaders in the last three decades. There is a saying that's very appropriate in this situation, and that is a non-productive work environment is one where employees are discouraged to speak up, fearing the loss of their jobs. Great leaders encourage feedback from all members of the organization. They are approachable. Number five, they do what they expect of others. If you expect your team to work hard and produce great results, you're going to have to do the same. When I was a kid, I worked at Wendy's, the fast food restaurant. There were two managers there, Maria and Francis. Maria was very good at telling us what to do, but she would always be in her office talking on the phone with her boyfriend. We listened to her, but none of us really respected her. And that is because she doesn't place the same expectations for herself as she does for us. Francis, on the other hand, was different. He didn't have a lot of leadership traits. In fact, he even had trouble telling us what to do. But the one thing he did have was he pulled his own weight. When it was busy, he would grab the spatula and start flipping burgers alongside us. 
As a result, he gained the respect of everyone. Whenever he was our manager, we worked hard because we wanted to. For Francis, a great leader sets an example, and as a result, gains the respect of his or her entire team. Number six, they are accountable. Your team's mistakes are your mistakes because you are their leader. Remember the restaurant example? When we left out part of the customer's order, the owner and I personally went to deliver what we missed. Imagine the owner of a restaurant coming to your doorstep to apologize for their mistake. That is unheard of, and yet that is exactly the level of accountability great leaders practice all the time. It's not just about responsibility; it's about taking the next step to make things right. Great leaders are accountable, and lastly, they are decisive. A lot of times, leaders have to make decisions that they are not sure of. But once they have enough evidence to suggest making that decision, they stick with it, and they do it with confidence. Imagine that you are the commander of an army, and you have to make the decision whether to enter the enemy territory from the north or from the west. There's no information as to which one makes more sense, but you will still have to choose, because without you, their leader, half of your army might decide to invade from the north and half from the west, and some might even call it quits and retreat. Therefore, your job as a leader isn't to always make the right decision, but it's to make a decision in order to keep the team together. Wrong decisions could be fixed, but a scattered team is a recipe for disaster. Great leaders are decisive and confident in their decisions. I hope these tips help you become a better leader. And as always, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to see more awesome videos like this one.